welcome back and on in this video we're going to uh, review virtual machine manager for Microsoft as well as installing and getting Hyper-V up and running uh, so there's a couple of things that you have to do and, and the number one thing that I would like to start saying is uh, don't recommend installing Hyper-V or Virtual Machine Manager 2012 on a virtual machine. <laughs> uh, best practice and what I recommend is installing everything on a physical server. A server that has enough memory as well as enough space uh, most likely. Uh, what I've seen is physical servers that are connected to fiber to like a NAS or SAN uh, or NetApp which is uh, like a, a NAS um, and have all the virtual machines hosted on to uh, the SAN or NAS server. Um, I have a link up right here that basically gives you a rundown of the system requirements for Virtual Machine Manager 2012. I will post these links up on my blog, uh, but just give you a rundown on what, like a processor, Pentium 4 2, dual core processor, RAM, the best would be 4 and up, 40 gigs of hard drive space, um, and full version of Microsoft SQL Server, which I have with this demonstration. Um, I'm actually going to have Virtual Machine Manager um, get hooked up to a full blown SQL Server rather than installing the Express Edition that they have. I actually show you that when I'm installing it. And the second link that I'm going to put on my blog is this link right here. Uh, if you want, Microsoft actually gives you an ISO with a pre configured Hyper V Server 2008 R2. Uh, you could use that, uh, but one thing I like about it is if you go down in the system requirements, it actually tells you a little bit of what it needs. Uh, it needs a 64-bit compatible processor with an Intel VT or, M or AMD V technology enabled. Uh, enabled. Uh, VT is virtual virtualization technology. Um, for this example, I actually had to configure. Uh, the virtual me machine as an Intel VT because it did not work. I, I got a lot of errors. Uh, basic rundown of the CPU process, speed, how much RAM, available disk, and so and so. Again, these two following looks, I links I will probably, most definitely, I'll put it in my blog so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so let me minimize this and let me tell you a little bit about the environment. Again, I'm running this on a um, virtual machine environment using VM workstation version 8 I have about four virtual machines and one of my machines is the SQL server fully blown which is number three actually let me correct myself number two and uh, virtual machine manager 2012 does not work if there's an active directory uh, in your environment so on virtu virtual machine four, I have a fully blown Active Directory that I you know I installed DNS, uh, installed Active Directory, did DC promo on it, did everything that I needed to do on it uh, to get these machines up and running and um, attached to my Active Directory. As you see, I got my uh, BJ SQL Server, which is number two. My Hyper VM01 is number five, and this guy right here is number three. This is where I'm going to install the uh, Virtual Machine Manager. Okay, so the first thing I would like to do is I'm going to go inside my number five, which is the Hyper V. Um, I'm going to right click here, make sure that the settings are legit, and I got the uh, Intel VT enabled. Uh, only reason that I'm double checking is because you know I have a lot of snapshots and I like to revert back and forth. So um, one of the snapshots that I have doesn't have Intel VT enabled. So that's just a check. Uh, different ways to get into uh, Hyper-V. Uh, I know there's an installation file that Microsoft provides. Uh, if you're using a uh, certain Microsoft server, which for me, I'm actually using 
um, Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition, and you that it's an actual role. Um, Hyper V, it's, a, it's an actual role that you can install. Uh, it's two ways to get into it. You gotta go to Start, All Programs, Administrator Tools, and then System Manager. Or if you haven't cleaned up the taskbar, you click on this guy right here, System Server Manager, and click on that. Let that pop up. Okay, and uh, what you want to do is you want to go to Rows. You want to add a rows, go to next, click on Hyper-V. Now, if you don't have the Intel VT enabled, most likely when you click this option to Hyper-V, you will receive an error, basically saying that the CPU or something is not compatible and to restart your machine and go to BIOS and do whatever you need to do to get it up and running. Once you got that up, hit next, hit next. Uh, for this example, again, I'm doing everything virtualization. Uh, I don't recommend doing this at all. All my virtual machines for this lab is running a one gig of memory uh, and one CPU. Uh, you know, it's an i7 core laptop that I'm actually using. So, you know, the processor is pretty good and the laptop has about eight gigs. So right now, out of the eight gigs, I'm actually using four gigs plus on the laptop. I will say uh, I'm using six gigs. Um, everything is wireless but again if you're doing this on a production environment or at your job as a um, a dev environment just for testing purposes most likely you have a physical server with uh, a NIC or two I recommend having a Hyper-V or Virtual Machine Manager on a physical server that has about two plus NIC cards uh, why because you could do um, you could do an incoming, outcoming port. Uh, you could do a little bit of VLAN porting. So those are the kind of things that you could do with multiple ports. Um, for this example, I'm just gonna hit uh, local area network. I'm gonna hit next. And once you get here, you hit install. And most likely, when you hit install, it's gonna initialize the installation, start installing, and it's going to want you to restart your server and you press OK yes I want to restart once you do the restart and reboots you log back in it's going to start the process again of um, finishing the Hyper-V So good, looks like I'm getting into the virtual machine. It's about 36% complete of the Windows feature. This is part of the whole Hyper V installation. does another reboot and I think on the final reboot that's when you could do a control delete and it will um, server manager will pop up and it will say successful install so hopefully cross the fingers everything went well okay uh, let me send a control alt delete command. Let me log in into this server. Give it a few. Server manager should be popping up right about. now <laughs> there we go 
It's resuming the configuration. It's configuring. If everything went successful, I'm probably going to get a warning. And the warning that I'm, I'm going to get is um, my Windows updates are not enabled. Um, it looks like Microsoft best practice is you could, whatever machine you install in Hyper-V, uh, it's nice to have Windows updates enabled. The reason why is because Hyper-V always have uh, a lot of updates coming from Microsoft. Uh, for, this, for this example, it looks like I'm good to go. Um, I don't have any warnings. I know in the previous um, times that I've tested this out, I had Windows, um, that, that Windows update warning a couple of times. So I guess I enabled it and didn't realize it, but whatever. We're good to go. Close it. As you can see in your server manager, you got a nice little new icon right here, Hyper-V, Hyper-V manager. You click on that guy, uh, plus sign pops up. That plus sign, when you click on it, it's going to be the name of your virtual machine. I mean, the name of your physical server. So the computer name of this virtual machine is actually Hyper-V VM01, as you can see. Okay. From here, uh, this is where you install all your virtual machines. And again, you can either have a, a local disk, uh, like a, multiple hard drives, and just install all your virtual machines there. You know, you could do a little mirroring. Uh, you could do a little bit of strip, uh, RAID 1, 0, 5, 10 if you want. Um, I, would, I would normally recommend if you're like in a corporate world and you guys are funded, you can try to get like a, a net app, uh, create a LUN, and just store all your VMs in it, and um, and just have just have your all your virtual machines in a different location rather than on the physical location. You know, uh, the physical server would be utilizing the CPU as well as the memory. Uh, you don't really want it to uh, take an overhead on the the hard drive the read and write so that's why I, I recommend putting it somewhere else but hey everyone everyone has a different way of doing it I, for what I've seen it's best to actually have it on like a, a NAS or a SAN uh, if you're not really budgeted to do get a SAN or a NAS um, you always got free NAS you can do it that way uh, it's a Linux a utility that allows you to do LUNs so it, it's pretty cool you can check that out uh, so now that we got this up we're going to go into my virtual machine three, and my virtual machine three. This is where I'm going to store virtual uh, virtual machine manager 2012 in it. Now, what I've seen in the past is that if you are using the default settings for virtual machine manager 2012, it does install Microsoft SQL Express Edition, I believe it is, and and the SQL database is hosted locally. Now, if you do have a SQL server, like I do, um, and you're connecting it to that SQL server, you have to have, I think, .NET Framework 3.5 features installed on the physical server, or for my case, the virtual machine, as well as you have to have uh, SQL Manager manage, Management Studios. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go to my server manager. Uh, I'm going to go to features, features, add a feature, .NET, add all required, next, next. I just need the .NET stuff. Hit next, hit install. Um, the user account that I'm logged in, I'm actually logged in into an account that I created on Active Directory. I also went into my SQL Server database, went to security logins, and I gave rights to that um, user account to be able to be a DB creator and also a sys admin and a server admin. So when I do connect to the SQL Server, 
um, I'm able to connect to it with no problem and create the database that I need to create with no problems at all. Let's go back to three. Looks like it's installing. It's a good thing. So, uh, I don't remember if I have to do a reboot on this. If I do have to re do a reboot, you know, I do the reboot, log in again. Uh, hopefully, it's, it gets finished. And once I do that, uh, I'm going to pop in my Secret Server CD, which I already have it popped in. I believe I already have uh, in the CD. And yes, I do. So I have that ready, and we're gonna install the management studio, so we can have that on this virtual machine. And I'm gonna mount the ISO of the virtual machine manager 2012. So this is completed. That's awesome. I'm gonna close that up. Go back in here. Right click on this guy. We're gonna install and run the program. Hit yes for the UAC user account control. I hate that. But you know, security, security, security. You can disable that if you guys want. I think I pretty soon I'm gonna blog about how to disable the UAC stuff. There's a registry key that allows you to disable it and enable it. Uh, I'll probably blog on that um, next week or so if I have some time. If you don't have the .NET Framework 3.5 features enabled, you won't get this far. Um, it would prompt you that you have to install it. You would think it's going to install it for you, but eventually it's going to get error out and be like, oh no. It's kind of smart. And it's like, oh, okay. It's basically saying, oh, you, you have Server 2008 R2 Enterprise and you have the feature already built in it. Install it from the feature section. Uh, I want to install new server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation not installing secret server on this machine again i already have a secret server somewhere else pass 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 good 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 i'm going to press ok the only thing that i want on this machine would be the sql server management tools install the support files I know I know I should have done this before even doing this uh, I should have gone straight to the point should have installed this beforehand but you know I wanted you guys to actually see this stuff so you know the process of doing this it's always good to see how everything is done rather than me just installing it beforehand and telling you guys okay this is what you need this is what you need and you be like oh you know how you do it so I don't know best practice so it's good to see it once the support files are good, it's going to get into uh, processing and more operations. I believe it's going to ask if you want to install a new instance or create a new instance or something else. But I'm not really, I don't really want to create an instance. I just are all the actual database stuff. Again, I'm just doing this just to get the, the management tools. Because for some reason, Virtual Machine needs it. That's only if you're connecting to an actual full-blown SQL database. Oh, got this little nasty guy. So I'm going to press OK on this and I'm going to restart it again see what's going on. I don't know why I got that. Let's run the program. Am I giving me problems? 
Don't you hate when things don't work the way you want it to work? It's amazing. But I guess that's we learn. Set of files should go pretty quick. Again, we already stall them with no problems in the first go. I don't know why we're having so many issues. Okay, firewall again. Don't really care. So it looks like the second time that we ran it, it's working now. I, I think. Because I think we passed this stuff already. Here we go. <laughs> Weird. So, I want this. I want the management tools. Basic management tools complete. That's all I want. Hit next. Hit next. Don't want to do none of this. Hit next. Okay, good. Next. Install. And that's it. We're going to wait. Install it. Once the installation is done, I'll probably go into the Start All Programs or Programs folder and create a shortcut to the desktop. and we're back and okay so management tool complete and basics are success and we're gonna hit next thank you and we're gonna hit close we're gonna close this let it fully close let's go to start starts all programs yes that's what we want yes and desktop cool now what I want to do is I want to go to settings on my virtual machine. I want to use an ISO and we're going to browse to my downloads folder and we want to do the virtual machine manager ISO. It's basically the final piece of our video. Hopefully everything will go well. So let's run this bad boy. Okay, so System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2008 R2. Uh, I think I was saying 2012, so I do apologize for that. Um, so 2008 R2 has two portions. Um, you have a physical server with the Virtual Machine Manager server. Okay, Virtual Machine Manager server is the physical server that's going to actually attach or control all your Hyper-V servers. And then you have your virtual machine administrator console, which can be installed on your local working machine. If you're a local IT person that deals with the virtual machines, you can install the administrator console on your on your desktop and log in or connect into your um, your VMM server, and you're able to manage and manage everything in one shot. For this example, I'm gonna do the virtual machine manager server on this virtual machine as well I'm going to install the ministry console on this machine so I'm going to do both of them so the first thing I'm going to do let's, uh, let's start the virtual machine manager 2008 server set up it's going to start extracting everything to the temporary folder once it does that it's going to bring the dialog box to start the, the setup Okay, so uh, I'm going to accept terms because I do trust Microsoft, not really. Uh, you can print it out if you want to read it when you have spare time, when you're in a train, or using a bathroom. Just a joke. Hit next. Uh, right here is if you want to specify uh, when Microsoft updates. It's recommended to, uh, to allow Microsoft to update 
the virtual machine manager but for in this case um, I'm not gonna do that so I just don't want to use Microsoft uh, updates hit next I don't want to participate on anything hit next give it a name I'm gonna give it uh, BJ's employee and BJ's uh, tech blog technology blog most likely if this is your job uh, you're putting I don't know uh, blog employee and your company whatever blog corporation or whatever you want to call it hit next now it's checking for the hardware requirement software requirement as you can see I have to have two green check marks everything looks like it's good processor is good the RAM is good um, again when you create a new or rebuild a server from scratch from a physical machine uh, when you install the OS you got all you got you know you assign a static IP address you um, add it to Active Directory you give it a name you do all that good stuff to it make sure that you go to Windows updates and push every single update that's out there um, the most important updates they are critical and the most important updates that you should be pushing out to your servers are security updates and service pack stuff I'm not really too big of a fan with um, IE updates you know um, what else oh dot net framework uh, that's another important update that you should be pushing out to your servers so hit next uh, specific location we're gonna keep it simple we're gonna keep it on the C drive hit next and this is where you do your secret server uh, secret server 2005 express edition sp3 can be installed by default but I don't like managing or having a SQL database when it deals with uh, programs like virtual machine manager SCOM SCCM these are the kind of tools that it's best to have a another physical machine that's running SQL Server because then you could do you know you could create um, what is it what is it what is it what is it uh, I, need one sec. Where are you? I think it's maintenance plans that you could create so I could back up manually and create BAK files and then you can back up that stuff and you can back up your database so let's get back here. So what I want to do is I want to actually use the server, my secret server from uh, VM2 right here. And secret server name is BJ SQL. I'm gonna give it BJ Tech. I think it's VM. B A M N. Yep. We're gonna give it the password. Cool. See if yep. There we go. That means we're good to do it. We want to create a new database. Cross the fingers. Everything should work. Hoping everything should work. Excellent. Excellent. So everything is successful. Uh, specify a default share for the virtual machine management library. I'm gonna keep this all default, but again, uh, I would normally recommend changing it to like the D drive. Right now, I think it's pointing to the C drive. Uh, for now, just keep it just keep it real simple default. I just want to show you guys how everything is configured. Hit next. Communication to the VMM administrator console by default is 8100. Communication to agents on the host and library servers by default it's 80. Which port 80 is very popular with a lot of IIS and HTTPS, you know, actually HTTP uh, sites. You know, a lot of web servers normally use 80 as their default port number. Uh, file transfer to agents on hosts and library servers is actually 443. Uh, VMM server account local system. I'm going to keep it as is. Click next summary and we're going to click next
there it goes. Uh, took a while, as you saw before. Uh, there was a command prompt installing all the good stuff into the Siku server. Oof. And it created a lot and lot of tables. Wow. I really doubt if there's anything in them. So let's do a, a query. And uh, let's do this command use virtue manager db uh, select from dbo tbl adhc most show nothing Nothing, 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 not yet, no. So that's good. Let's go back here. And we're good. Check for latest virtual machine manager updates. We don't want to do that now. Press OK. Let's see if I go to server manager. Did it create a, a tab? I think it I think it enables hyper V for me I'm not too sure probably wrong still collecting data at the web server stuff okay so I did it all right, and then we're gonna install the virtual machine administrative console doing the same thing extracting all the files into temp and it's gonna start the installation accept the terms and agreements I do not want to do that for now but for production purposes um, you would do this but for this um, video I'm just not gonna do it hit next hit next everything's good to go keep it there port 8100 as make sure now if you change the port on the virtual machine manager administrative console when you installed the server if you change the port make sure that you have the same port here for the safe side I left it as 8100 and by default it is 8100 so I'm good to go it next gives you a run through install and we wait And we're good. Now uncheck this. Uh, by default, it creates a shortcut on your desktop. Press close. Good. We exit out of this. Um, I'm going to go to my settings and dismount that ISO. We don't want that anymore. We're good to go. Let me see. Double check. Let's see, it's gone. You're there. Just check one more time. Cool. Good, good, good. All right. So now that we have that running, we're gonna double click on this bad boy and uh, let it run. Local host. We're good to go. Most likely, if you install the System Center Virtual Machine Manager admin console on your local machine that you use every day to troubleshoot stuff or remote into other machines uh, the server name would be the actual host name where you install the server name with a colon with 8100 uh, because I have the administrative console tool on the actual virtual server it's gonna say local host so we're gonna connect if everything goes well I should go in see a nice little beautiful interface and the last thing that I would do is add our hyper V box which is number five into our host and the way that you do that is by the action panel add host so before I even do that this is the virtual machine manager console pretty cool a lot of neat things in here I probably do another video um, 
when I have a couple of virtual machines up here I have to do a little bit more testing and once I get the testing done and I start playing around with this guy with this stuff uh, create another virtual uh, create another video showing you guys how to do this how to do that and all that stuff for but for the last thing on this video I'm gonna add a host okay and uh, Windows Server based host and Active Directory and domain into the credentials for connecting to the host. Um, I'm going to use. Ooh, let's try the administrative password. See if we can connect. Hit next. We'll do a search. Hyper V. There we go. There we go. That's the one I want. Let's add that one. Let's add it. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Hit next. One or more of the servers in the add host list is running Windows Server 2008 operating system. If the Hyper V row is not enabled in any of these servers, Virtual Machine Manager will enable the row on those servers as part of the aid add host host process which will result in a restart of the server do you want to continue sure uh, I haven't built a system yet over here but whatever we're gonna add them in all the host uh, add a virtual machine path or use the default I use the default whatever and they have a nice little you know me, if you know me, uh, I love PowerShell, I love scripting, so most likely uh, I would save this guy into uh, my desktop, create nice little PowerShell stuff, um, add host, PS1 to the desktop, so I can review how that stuff is done through PowerShell, add the host. Once you add the host, you click on add the host, you get this nice little window. And it's installing its stuff. Um, again, because I'm doing all this through virtual machines, and all these virtual machines are really like real sluggish and slow. It's probably going to take a while. Uh, I think it has three steps. For, for, this, for this example, it has three steps. So it adds the virtual machine. Stores the virtual machine manager agent and then refresh the host and that's it, you're done. Yeah, so I wonder how long it's gonna take. Look at that. It's looking good. It's looking good. Bell to refresh it made no sense I don't know what I don't know why that happened unable to perform the job because one or more of the set is oh, okay still running this stuff so I can't really do a refresh that makes sense so probably this one should run yeah awesome so this guy is fully at it so what can you do with this? Well, rather than me going in here and creating virtual machines, I can actually use this entire virtual machine manager and I could, you know, create virtual machines in here. So I could go to virtual machines right now and do a new virtual machine. Uh, create a new virtual machine, hit next, give it a name, I don't know, uh, test 01 VM, hit next. Give it all the specs that you want. Uh, I'm gonna give this 
a really small hard drive. I mean, like extremely small. Now, before I even do that, let's go to let's see if I have that. Okay. How about we go previous and we give it a little smaller than that. We give it five, five. Go to next. Oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Place the virtual machine on a host. Yes. Most likely you have multiple hosts. Virtual machine also does uh, some clustering as well as FT, which means fault tolerance. Uh, if you are a VMware guru and you're done with vSpare or you're done with ESX or ESXi, you know a little bit about VT, which is awesome. Uh, click on the host. You probably have multiples for me. I only have one. Hit next. The location of the virtual path. We, uh, you can keep it there if you want. Select the store location of the host. I keep it there. Whatever. Um, give it the nick again if you have multiple nicks. You know this is where you would tell it where you want that virtual machine to go to. Hit next. Uh, never automatically turn on the machine. Got other options as always. Automatically turn on the virtual machine and all that stuff. I'm gonna leave it as default. Uh, action. Turn on virtual machine. Action when physical server stops. I'm gonna leave all this as default. Um, I don't know. Go other other Linux. I don't know. Next. Uh, view the script. Oof, this is nice. Look at this one. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna say this one too. I like I like scripts. Uh, so we're gonna call this one uh, new new VM PS1. Close it. Create. And with the magic of everything. Uh, virtual machine manager cannot locate the boot or the system volume of the virtual machine test. The reserve virtual machine may not start or operate properly. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. I don't need it to start because I don't need it to start. I'm just showing you guys how this stuff is. So, if you go back into 5, which is my virtual machine, and there you go. And that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, again, please post any questions or comments. Uh, also, check out my blog with uh, bjtechnews.wordpress.com. Also, within the link, I'm going to have my personal um, account, email account. So, you guys, if you have any questions or any response or any feedback, you know, email me. Let me know what you guys think. Okay.